This video is a follow-on to an earlier video that featured an Arduino with a 16x2 LCD shield, an IR optical sensor, and a $12 speed controller, all working together to form a simple closed-loop digital speed control. For CNC routing or milling operations, it takes all the guesswork out of how fast the spindle is turning. As said in the earlier video, it seemed like an easy build, but I have to confess I used an oscilloscope to locate the optimal position for the spindle speed sensor. And if you have access to one too, then I think yours will work fine. But recognizing that a scope is something not everyone has got me to thinking about how a workaround for this part of the build. So if this is you, then maybe this video will be of some value. What it shows is the same hardware as before, but with an updated sketch that adds a fourth display mode. This new mode configures the display to act as a rudimentary scope. To be clear, it's a crude alternative, but for our needs, and provided that everything else is wired correctly, it's good enough. It takes advantage of the fact that the speed controls application, the output sensor has a fairly simple waveform. In fact, if it were ideal, the output is either on or off, meaning that our scope would only have to render two lines, one at 5 volts and the other at zero. The LCD display supports eight custom characters. So armed with some code that can determine which 5x8 grids can share the same bitmaps to form a trace, it should be possible to render a usable version of the sensor's output versus time using 8 bit maps or less. Remember, we just said 2 was all that we needed to represent the ideal case. And thinking about it from the other way around, if the sensor's output is so complex that it takes more than 8 bit maps to represent it, then it probably is not usable for our application, so it's not really necessary to show it in its entirety anyway. So again, our display will tell us all we need to know. The scope code supports two trigger modes, interrupt based triggering and a negative slope trigger. To keep the user side simple, it prefers interrupt triggering, but if there's no activity on pin 3, then it looks for a negative going change on A1. And if it doesn't see any change there, it'll eventually go ahead and populate the display with whatever it finds on A1 at the time. Another thing to know is when running in the slope trigger mode, it uses a fixed time base, whereas the interrupt mode will adjust the sampling so that the sensor's negative going pulse occurs more or less in the middle of the display. The idea being, with it positioned in the middle, it will render a better visualization of both the leading and trailing edges of the pulse. So the takeaway here is, when you do this build, you want your timing mark to have good sharp leading and trailing edges. That way the Adrena's interrupt pin won't get confused about the direction of change. And because the code is looking only for a change in state and not duration, a narrow timing mark as measured in degrees of rotation, will be easier to sync to over a wide mark. In my case, the spindle cap was all black, so I added a white timing mark. But if your spindle has a chrome cap, then you might want to use a black timing mark and change the sketch to trigger on a positive going pulse. A word of caution here though, the sketch as written doesn't have a single flag to change the trigger mode. So if you elect to go this route, review the code carefully to make sure it gets changed everywhere it needs changing. Anyway, going back to the premise it's a black cap with a white timing mark and you're adjusting the sensor for best position, we said earlier that in a perfect world the interrupt pin would see 5 volts when the sensor wasn't looking at the timing mark and 0 when it was. But if your world isn't perfect, then position the sensor such that it favors the 5 volt output. That way you will help to ensure only your timing mark generates the trigger condition. Finally, 
After you've downloaded this from GitHub, take a few moments to read the notes found at the top of the sketch. There I've tried to give some detail about where these files should be positioned with respect to the Adreno's IDE, as well as some thoughts on what's needed on the hardware side. Hopefully, there's enough there to get you up and going, but admittedly, it's pretty brief. So, if you do run into trouble, let me know, and together maybe we can sort it out. And hopefully, make it easier for the next person who wants to have a go at this project. Well, thanks for watching, and good luck on your project.